Hey, what's up, everybody? We man here once again on another episode of Little Revolution. Of course, we have Poncho Moller. What's up, guys? Fifth grade education. Yeah, welcome <laughs> to our show. <laughs> <laughs> and our greatest uh, guest today of all time, a big hero of mine, big hero of Ponch. Yes, sir. Mr. Tony Cox. Tony Cox. Thank Woo! you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Glad hey, to thanks be for here. coming on the show, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Anytime for you guys. When uh. when we came up with the show and we had a dream list, uh -huh. you were at the top. Oh. You were one of the top people we wanted on the show. Thank you. I appreciate so, that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It's so good to have you. Yeah. I have a, a funny story uh, of us. I know we did mm -hmm. a movie together. We'll get into that. Yes. But the funny story I want to tell to start this off is um, I never went out for movie castings too much uh -huh. i've maybe done a handful total okay but one that i did get a phone call was was this christmas movie uh -oh. and uh they said hey they want you to play this elf he's kind of crazy he's a little you know he's rambunctious uh -huh. he's right. a thief uh -huh. right and i'm like oh this is right up my alley i'm right. like okay i'll go for this one uh -huh. did the did the casting the casting people made me feel good yeah and I thought I nailed it and all that. And then mm -hmm. I get a phone call. They're like, no, we, we would like to thank you for coming out. But but we chose someone else. I'm like, chose someone else. I'm like, <laughs> I kind of know all the little people out there that are that can fit for this. And, mm -hmm. I, and I just tell me who you picked. Mm -hmm. And they said, Tony Cox. I'm like, oh, yeah, you guys picked the wrong right one. Yeah. I'm like, you nailed it. Well, they there wanted someone that was actually funny. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and good looking yeah, 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 yeah I don't even think you got the phone call to be even I wasn't, I wasn't even in, in LA. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't even born yet <laughs> whatever dude that wasn't too. even in LA yet but no uh, you that, were in LA so you auditioned for that too you were wow. in LA dude yeah. don't try and say you were in LA you were trying no to be, I wasn't in LA yet for Bad Santa 1 you were trying to be Mr. Hollywood dude. 2002 yeah. No, yeah. I, I wasn't in L.A. till 2004, I swear to God. No, was, 2002 was when they did it. Yeah. I know, no, but so that's he's why. He's saying he wasn't in L.A. Oh, I see what you're saying, 2002. Oh, you probably, think he would have got a phone call? No, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. I was, I was really scared of the camera back then. <laughs> so, yeah, with that said, what was that audition process like for Bad Santa? For those of you that don't know, we're talking about Bad Santa, the movie, yeah. iconic comedy movie with tony cox billy bob thornton bernie mac yeah john ritter holy shit what a cast right it was there a, yeah. it was a great movie and they did cast it right yeah. like yeah. when yeah and especially you, you played the uh, amazing character Thank now you. is that a movie yeah. that could come out nowadays you think yes that it could, they could make that movie nowadays right Are you you mean with social norms or something like that no no with the with how pow, pc the culture has gotten is that a movie that would be frowned upon nowadays i mean it's i think it could come out again yeah. but i also think it's a movie that's timeless now yeah definitely like it's one that people down the line will see and they'll still see tony down the street and be like bad santa oh my god yeah what a great so, movie i mean man. i get that a lot man yeah i mean everywhere i go it's like bad santa you know is that the most is that the most people call you out for bad santa and friday yeah of course friday, friday. and and sometimes me myself and irene i loved me myself is that the and is that the uh like top one second one third one that it goes down in like you mainly get bad Santa. Yeah, it's bad Santa. Sometimes it's Friday. Yeah, you know a lot of people love Friday. Oh, Friday's you know? so good. Right, and and every now and then you get Jim Carrey. You know me, my man. I love you, and me myself and Irene. That's you know, true fans. Yeah. That's when true oh, yeah. fans oh, call yeah. you out. Oh yeah. That's so we we go miss uh for. So it's Tony Cox, a.k.a. Mr. Parker. That's it. That's it, baby. That's it. In the house, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So, um, been up to, what have you been up to lately? Anything new? And yeah. any, any movies or anything new that you can mention now? No, I actually retired in 2016 because there wasn't nothing really happening. I had a couple of hip replacement surgeries, you know, um, and so I retired in 2016. So I'm like now starting to come back because everybody keeps saying, well, why don't you come back, man? I mean, if you retire, come back. You know, so I'm thinking about coming back. You know, yeah. Uh, Watch out, guys! Tony's coming back. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. yeah, I would love to see you in a new movie. I yeah. feel like still to this day there is no 
other little person that has comedic timing like this guy. Yeah. Like the comedic timing that you have and mm-hmm. that you share with other actors. Wow. Like the things that you guys are able to do together. Like I did a, a commercial for, uh, it I was, was instant death. Uh, yeah. It was uh, like a black eyed peas commercial. Okay. Mm-hmm. Kind of like it was like a music video commercial. They did a whole like a uh, thing with it and he was in it and that's how I met him. Okay. And he had scenes with Terry Crews. You know who Terry Crews is? No, no, no. He, uh, Big black dude, very talented, yeah. funny, super strong. He, I, I think I he, ho- he, he hosts knows, America's yes. Got Talent. Uh, yes, I know. Well, him and like Tony that. did scenes together, and Tony played like the big bad boss, yeah. and 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 Terry played like his his goon, like his like he was like a idiot savant goon. But and t- <laughs> the scenes that these dudes did together, like as soon as they would yell cut, like the entire cast and crew would just stop, like die laughing it was so much fun to That's watch and awesome. it was like a it was like an acting class for me like to watch that and go okay like there, there's a reason he's where he's at and and and, and getting the roles he's getting oh, I appreciate and that. Thank yeah you. no dude yeah. it was it, it was like on another level man like yeah. i appreciate i remember you telling me that because uh Terry and myself, we just started improv. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's my thing, man. You can improv. Well, you you know, that's something I was able, we were able to go on with the scene and do it. And they actually was talking about doing a show for us, you know. You um, and Terry? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever yeah, happened. I, mean, I, I had a meeting or two with them, and then I, I guess it just didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, uh, is that what a lot of your scenes were, like, it, like, and me, myself, and Irene, and like, and, and in Bad Santa, was, was it a lot of improvising? Because you and Bernie Mac had these scenes that were just go on, and they were so much fun to watch. Yeah, and everything I do, I improv. Yeah, and a lot of times the directors they'll let me do it. Yeah, they'll tell me to come up with stuff, you know. And I'm blessed with them to tell me that because that's what I like to do. And I, I guess, I go to the next level in that. Because to me, I can finish it better if I improv. And I just want to make people Like put laugh. the button on it. Put the button on it, you know, because it's not quite there. So I want to put the button on it. So that's what I do. And I always feel like, too, when you're improvising, it's, it's never like disrespect to like the writers of, do, of the doing because their writing is great and that have led you to what you're about to do in the scene. Like I always feel like it, it's putting that button on it sometimes is better. Yeah, feel, you know. Yeah, that's that's something because you said that, man. Because uh, when I was doing the BET things and I was ad libbing and putting my stuff in there, and uh, I remember they came it was a lot of other people trying to do the same, and the writers got upset about it. And they told them, "Don't do that." You know. What'd you do for BET? I did a little show. We were called the three, the three little guys of myself and Arturo. The three little guys. Yeah, it wasn't the three little guys. I can't remember. It's been so long. That was so long ago. It was myself and Arturo and Dana. I know, you know Arturo. Dana. Yeah. 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 And 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 so Th- we did this show for them. And like I said, a lot of times I would go out on my own and do my own stuff, and they loved it. But they stopped the other people from doing it. When I went to them, I said, "Look, if you want me to stop," they said, "No, not you. You know what you're doing." But it was it's disrespect to writers when somebody haven't been in the business that long and try to change their lines. I don't change their lines. I just might add a couple of things to enhance it. Nice. Yeah. Did you ever think of going out and doing comedy, like stand up comedy? Yeah, stand up. No, but I've had people to come up and say I should do it. Matter of fact, Chris Tucker said he would even write for me when we did Friday. Oh, you know, he said because and you didn't want to. No, man. Yo, I just, I just, Chris I just, Tucker wrote man. for you and you were doing stand up. Holy you would, shit. You would have been killing it out there. What, oh, man. What, what kept you from doing that? I don't know, man. I, I think I take my head off to people that can do that. You know okay. what I mean? You got hecklers out there, and when mm. the comedians can come back with stuff, you got to be fast with that. But that's um, what you have, too. You have that natural comeback. You know, the he's, a, he's a good rebuttaler. Yeah. yeah. Right. Totally. Well, yeah, I, I appreciate that. I don't know. I just, you know, I just said I, I didn't want to do it, you know, but I take yeah. off my hats, man. I mean, to anybody that try to do it, you got people out there drinking, and they looking for you to make them laugh, and they sitting <laughs> up there with their face, you ain't funny, dude. Oh, you know gosh. what I mean? Like that, man. And you sitting there, it's like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? So it, it's tough, man. Yeah, now. 
I hear you. Um, so you you were you you grew up in Alabama? Is Alabama where you were born? No, I was born in Manhattan at Women's Hospital in New York. But then my grandmother raised me from nine months. And so I went to stay there. But Uniontown, Alabama was just the best for me. I mean, that was my hometown, small town. Everybody knew everybody. And being a little person, it was much better for me being reared up. in Like growing up there? Oh, yeah. It was much better. It's just, I think, you know, when you're raised in a big city or something, you know how people try to pick on you and stuff. I never got that. You know so, I mean? Oh, I wow. Kids and I, stuff like that. I didn't get picked on either, but I kind of grew up. Some people in, got picked on, but yeah. I didn't. I, I think it's because person. both of you guys, like, you grew up in a place, like, you were, like, born there and you were raised, not born there, but you were raised in one place, like, your whole life, just like mm-hmm. him in Alabama, where everyone knows you. you no, grew I moved up, around. Oh, you moved around? I okay. moved around. You moved around. And each time when I moved around, I, uh, I made sure I found, like, the friends that were friends. Yeah. Oh, and that's then, good. Yeah. So yeah, no, I moved around. Okay, I thought you were. I thought you you were raised no. here in um, different Tomosa, parts of L.A. You know, one time uh, Culver City. Nope, in the San Fernando Valley when I was younger, till about third grade. Then I moved to Torrance, and then I started third grade. You start a whole elementary school over. Is Torrance where you started skateboarding? Yeah, Torrance nice. is where I started. You had a lot of friends. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. But I had that personality that I just start making friends right. I away feel like anyway. I, I, as a little person, that's one thing you have to have is a personality, man. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you know this world is cruel, and if I you know, take everything personally, and yep. you know it's just going to be really hard for you. You got to have tough skin. I oh, yeah. you have to. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. So, so that's cool. So you were no. raised in Alabama, yeah. mm-hmm. and and then and then is and then you were you you, you I, I read that you were a drummer. Yeah. Yeah, I used to play like in drums. a band or in school. I had my own band. I really? played in school too. I played in the school band, but I couldn't read music because at the mm. time, like eight years before I got to the high school, they had stopped the musical program. You know, so I didn't know how to read. But everything I heard, I could hear almost like the movie Drumline. Mm. If I heard it, I could play it. I had a good ear to. And pick do you up still stuff. drum? No, I haven't drummed in a long time. But I had my own band back then, Tony and the Real Things. Tony what? and the real thing? The real thing, baby. No yeah. way. Doing our thing, man. <laughs> what, what, what did you guys play, rock? No, we played funk. Funk? Oh. Yeah. Played funk. Was Damn this man. in the 70s? Yeah, This was. was in the 70s, and it you guys played 70s, funk. Yeah. Yep. Nice. I and, love funk. And part of the 60s. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. Because I have been playing ever since I was like two. You know, I started out with pencils, and my grandmother brought me the drums, and I played in the school band because I knew the school beat ever since I was, like, two or three years old. <laughs> so when it came to the band, you know, it was like, okay, this is natural. So I could play that, you know. And we just had drums playing anyway. We didn't have the trumpets or all that stuff because we didn't have no musical program. Yeah. Wow. So with that, did you go straight from, like, living in Alabama to, like, Wanting to be an actor and, and move out here? No, I wanted to be a musician. That's what I thought I would be because wow. playing, playing music all my life like that, I thought that's, you know, that was my calling. But then when you get to college, <laughs> realization <laughs> hit. It's like, well, shit, when she gave me the book and said, uh, everybody hum these notes, that shit looked like Chinese to me. <laughs> like, hum it, shit, I don't even know what it's saying. You know what I mean? So I really yeah, You're like relearning right, how to read. And right, shit. and I didn't know how to read music. You know, it wasn't my fault. Just didn't have it at my school. So I had to think about something else I wanted to do. And so I thought about acting. I had seen... Uh, the guy from Wild Wild West, Dr. Loveless, they called him. Uh, I don't know if you remember him. It was way back in the day. And this guy was a good actor and he could sing. They also would show him, he always would have this tall guy with him who would, you know, be the guy that fight for him and everything. What what the, what, what was his name? Why, uh, Dr. Loveless, that's what they called okay. him in the film. He was an was actor, real, little yeah. person actor? Right, but also Billy Barty. Okay. You know, I yeah. saw some things that Billy did and... And uh, I used to look at Billy. I thought he was good. I don't know, was it Little House on the Prairie or one of those shows where they were talking about his size and he had to steal because he had a wife and he had a child. And, uh, you know, they were calling him the M word, which we don't like. I mean, I don't like it. Some little people don't care. But I hate that word. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. I, uh, 
I grew up around Billy Barty. I used to go to his house. Really? Yeah, when I was a kid, he mm-hmm. lived real close. Mm-hmm. And my dad would take me over there and stuff, and I and I hung out with him a couple times. Yeah, he, he was, was a great guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I'm like, dude, this like he's awesome. Yeah, so, a really good actor. Oh, yeah, very good actor. Oh, yeah. Really? Good. Yeah, yeah, very really. good actor. Yeah, he yeah. put, I think, little people on the map for acting. He did. Yeah. I think so. So for, like, straight acting, he right, did. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to go back. So when you were, was it in college you started your your band? with you know? With no, I was. I had a band ever since I was, like, in the eighth grade or seventh grade, and we used to play at clubs. Really? <laughs> yeah. No, so that was Tony and the Tony and the real thing and the real thing. And we did it real, baby. No way! How yeah. many people were in your band? We had about five. All right. Me on drum, bass, guitar, lead guitar, and actually a guy on congas. Okay. I think it was like four piece, like four. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. No way. Yeah, it, it was cool, man. Is there any music somewhere that it's like recorded and we can hear it? You know, I did have it on a tape, but even I can't find it. Oh, man. Yeah, but I also played with the Tommy Cortez Orchestra. You know, I would go up and do a number with them, um, and we would, you know, I went downtown and played with them, and I would play Rocky. You know, that was my song that I would get up and play, but they recorded it at the Musician Union, so I was there, and I listened to what the drummer was doing, and I got it, came back, played it, and so I was on the show. Oh, no so way. I used to, yeah. So awesome. Yeah, Tommy Cortez, that guy was a nice guy. I don't know whether he's living or not, but uh, you know he helped me out a lot. Okay. Yeah. Tony, are are is anybody else in your family a little person? No, it's just you, kind of like us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah your mother and father the same height. Yep. Yep. No, Tall people. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. No uncles, no cousins, nothing. Right. No even. Even now, down the line, none of my nieces or nephews or little people. Well, they, what they said about me, that I had uh, somebody who was shorter than me in the it, family. It, I heard hereditary. So mine, they said, was hereditary. Okay. But they said he was... Down I the line he, yeah, somewhere? Yeah, down the line. And what, and wow. what is the on name of... On my father's side. Oh, they even knew it was on your father's yeah. side? Wow. Yeah. Whoa. It was on my father's side. Yeah. Okay. And... Yeah. So we're the average dwarfs. We're the contraplasia. Yeah, dwarfs. that's what I was going to ask. Is yeah. what, what kind of, what, what is your dwarfism called? Call I don't know because I didn't let them take tests. When they talked about pulling some skin from here, pulling up, you know, I was like, <laughs> shit's over. The test is over. I don't care what I am. Whatever I am, I am. I'm like, Papa, you ain't pulling nothing up out of me. <laughs> that's so, awesome. So, yeah, so I didn't let them. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, Tony's just Tony. Yeah, yeah that's and, it, and the real one. Yeah. Yeah. I love that name. Yeah. That's a good name. Yeah. Um, and you're married. You have a child. Yeah. yeah. Uh, your wife average height? Mm-hmm. And yeah. Your, and your child, Actually, too. Actually, we huh? went to school together, but we didn't get together in school. I didn't find out about her. I knew she was out here somewhere. And when I went home... To me, she was the prettiest girl in the school. Yeah. And, you know, people might say, oh, you bias or whatever. But if she wasn't the prettiest, she was the second or the third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because she was just built. She had it all. Never would I thought her and I would get together. We didn't even talk. I would just see her, and I would just say, that's a pretty girl right there. You know? Yeah. And um, I left my number uh, with one of her friends down there and said, if she come down, give her my number. You know, and, and she said when she did go down, she was wondering, like, why does he want my number? We never talked or nothing, you know. But she would always stay in touch. And finally we went out. But, man, I, like, turned her down three times. I got scared. scared. <laughs> you know, it's like, shit, man. It's like, what am I going to talk about? You know, yeah. and I actually, you know, would make the date. And then I will say, like, something came up. And then I think the third time, you know, I told her I couldn't come. And then she said, I, I know, she said, I know it must be hard. You know, you working and doing all that. So she said, it's okay, and that broke my heart. And I just said, I'm going out next time. And we went out. I took her to this Mexican place, El Cholo's, which is one of my favorite restaurants. I went there with you. Yeah. Oh. She and my wife went with yeah. you and your wife. Yeah. 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 No way. Yeah. El Cholo's. You, you, yeah, you get a couple of drinks in your boy's own. <laughs> you know, give you them nerves to talk. Yeah. And a couple of their green tamales. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. I love El Cholo's. Yeah. El Cholo's oh, you go good. there? Yeah. Oh. I used to go to the one in Santa Monica. 
Oh, that's the one I used to go to. Yeah, I used to go yeah. there. That yeah. one's good. The one I used to go to the one a lot. The original one is on Western. Oh, okay. But it, but it's that's the one, one we met you at, the Western one. Right. And then there's the Santa Monica one. Yeah. I like to go out there because I just like out being by the ocean anyway. Yep. Mm, you know, and yeah. that's nice. And I think they have one downtown. I haven't gone to that one. I either. think they do, too. Yeah, you haven't I, gone to that nope, one. Nope, right? I've only been to the Santa Monica one. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Cool, man. So you moved out here, and what was, like, how did you get an agent? What was, what like... I t- when I came out here, actually, I didn't go to college, but like three weeks, man. Because once that happened, it was like, okay, I I know I gotta leave. But everybody was saying you need to stay, and I went around and talked to the teachers. You know, could they teach me music from the beginning? But they said no. It's something that you really need to have gotten in high school, mm-hmm. you know. But it wasn't my fault, and so. My aunt and uncle who had come down, and I called them my aunt and uncle, but they really was just two people that helped me. And for somebody to come there, they heard me playing the drums, and he came over and he said, you got too much talent to be here. He said, I'm going to give you the opportunity to come to California and make something of yourself. He also told me, he said, bring your car, because you got to have transportation in Los Angeles. And he said, if you don't make it in Los Angeles, you're not going to make it. But he gave me that opportunity. Wow. And I went stayed with him and his wife i drove out i think my grandmother came with me and another friend named george road trip really have road trip road trip and got out here and i was supposed to go to ucla it had started and she worked at ucla she was a custodian there and she looked in the garbage can and here was this paper about acting schools and so it was all these acting schools and so we decided to go and try them you had to take the screen test the first one didn't even give me a screen test. The guy said, I'm black, you got a strike against you. Told me to turn around, said the only thing you ever do is be in a costume. That hurt. But I came out, I remember coming out, and I had tears in my eyes, and my aunt said, why are you crying? And she said, that guy don't know you. He don't know where you come from. He don't know how you built. He don't know what's in your heart. She said, but she would always use psychology. She would say, okay, if I was you, I would go to this school and show him. I didn't want to go there, but I was going to do it because of what she said. But then I went to two other schools. They gave me the screen test. One said, I can't believe you never took acting before. He said, right now you could help me with the class. And then the third school was Americ Studios. And that was, I wanted to go there because Hollywood was up the street. Mm-hmm. It's something about Hollywood. And I was on Vine. And so that's the school. They gave me the screen test. And I remember the guy saying, he said, you got a chance to make a lot of money. He said, you don't come up off the street like you. You know, he said, you just came out of nowhere. He said, you really got a lot of talent. And he said, I give you three months. And he said, you'll be on your way. But you do need to go to this school for a little while. You yeah. know, and I went. I wanted to stop at one point, but my aunt said, no, you're going to finish. Yeah. So, but I, I graduated six months before time. I graduated top of the class. And acting just started. One of my teachers, Ruben Marino, he gave me the opportunity, man. He was the one that said, I'm going to get you an agent. But he said, I want to be your manager. I thought he was just talking. Three months time, he did. He took me. He got me an agent. And it started. Wow. That's how my career started. Are you still with the same agent and manager? Well, up oh, until no. you retired? Oh, no, no. no? I've been you, you changed it? Yeah, I've changed agencies that. about... Maybe about three times. Like, uh, I have a manager now. Yeah. And I had a manager before this manager, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, you go through changes. Oh, you know? yeah. And yeah. different things you're doing right. and stuff. And right. And other agencies or whatever, managers come up and they got something better. Oh, yeah, they do. got something better than yep. you, you move up. You yeah. Know? No, yeah. good. Yeah. So, awesome. for, like, uh, Bad Santa, uh-huh. uh was there callbacks for it, or did you just book it right away? Oh, no. I, I think the worst thing for me, when I read for the director, and I asked him, I said, you know, I, I have in my mind how I want to do this. And I said, I've been working on something. I said, will you let me try it? And I said, if not, I'll do it the way I think that everybody else is doing. You know, and then he said, oh, I'm willing to try anything, which let me know he hadn't found who he wanted. And so I started doing my thing, doing the lines, but ad-libbing. 
and doing other things. He was laughing so hard, tears was coming out of his eyes. He stopped me in the reading and said, somebody get me some Kleenex. <laughs> you know? And, no and I, yeah. And I remember when the reading stopped, he looked at me and he said, I got some good news and bad news. I'm thinking, what the hell could be the bad news? You just laughed until you cried. Yeah. You know? And I'm thinking, what is, he said, well, what do you want for us? I said, just give it to me. He said, that was one of the best readings that I've ever heard. He said, but this role, this role requires a Caucasian. What? And I was like, oh, shoot. Are you, you serious? Know? Yeah. It was written for a Caucasian. And he said, but I have to rethink it. And after that, man. Well, it's weird that he said that to you because why would he read you? You know? Yeah. Well, he, he told me later. Him and I still talk. We good friends. Yeah. Uh, he told me later that they said, it's this guy that was in me, myself, and Irene. Would you like to see him? But he's black. And he said, yeah. And he said he had seen that movie. So he brought me in. You know, And I don't know if they was expecting uh. anything. So he brought me in. And so when he brought me in, I showed what I could do. I auditioned nine times. Whoa. Yeah. Was like it the same the, scene every time or different scenes? Uh, I think it was different ones. You know, sometimes it'll be one for like two times. I go in, it might be another one, you know, for a few times. But man, it was, it was a lot of auditions. And I remember when it got down to the last, when I had to read with, I know Bernie Mac was coming in. Uh, and they were going to make the decision the following week. I think Bernie came in on a Wednesday. So I read with Bernie Mac. Holy we shit. Hit it off. Yeah. Imagine that audition or just watching audition. that. Nine auditions. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then they were testing you. They were seeing yeah. if your guy's oh. chemistry was going to be work. Well, see, they didn't. The, the producers did not want me. They wanted, you know who they wanted. I don't know. Who? Peter Dinklage? No. Oh, Peter Dinklage tried out. He didn't get it. Warwick Davis tried out. He didn't get it. They wanted Danny. Danny Woodburn. Yeah. He's got that kind of that attitude Danny like that. Woodburn. Yeah. That's he, was what in, I said. Uh, he was in uh, Seinfeld. Little guy. Yeah. He's funny guy. Oh, yeah. they wanted him. They wanted, the producers wanted him. But I had the director and I had Billy Bob. Once I read for Billy Bob, I mean, that was it. Everything just flowed. I knew that was the big day. And that first scene... When we finished that first scene, the director looked at us. He said, wow. He said, you guys want to try it again? And I remember Billy Bob looked up, and he said, it ain't nothing more you can do with that. <laughs> said, Let's move on. And I was like, yes, Lord, yes. Because nice. I prayed about it. You know? Wow, Tony. That is fucking beautiful, man. What a... Yeah. I wonder if, like, if, if Billy Bob always had the role or he had to audition, too. I wonder what other people played for, like, uh, uh, it was other It was other actors... That was up for that role, you know. But and Billy Bob like, just Billy, he was it. such a you scumbag. Can't, you can't see nobody else playing it. Yeah, I can, but Billy Bob. Yeah. Well, the way I look at it now too you is can't, I can't like, see no one else playing it right, but you. Yeah. Right. Both oh, you guys. Thank you. I appreciate that. But I could see where they wanted Danny, dude. Mm. Yeah, he's got that attitude. He kind of angry. But, mm -hmm. You know, he played that really well. He didn't nail it like mm -hmm. Tony nailed. Oh no, it. Tony nailed it. Yeah. Nice. I, don't, I don't think Danny comes anywhere towards me as far as comedy. I mean, wow. Danny's good. I just think that <laughs> comedy-wise, I mean, he's a good actor, you know, but I just think comedy-wise, I don't, I don't. And that's what Billy Bob said. He said, you know, you find that comedy. And I don't even know if it was meant for comedy when they wrote it, but when I came in and did it that way, you know, because sometimes they don't know what they want. You know what I mean? They don't really know. They'll have you to come in and read. Then it's the actors that give them an idea. Yeah. You know? You know what's funny is you mentioned you, when you were talking to the director that you have an idea in your head of what you want to do. Mm -hmm. If if there's any way you could try it out that way, right. and then you'll do it the way you think right. everyone else is going to do right. it. I like doing that. I do that as well. Like when I go and read, like, That's you good. know, I'm like, I'm going to try it this way. Right. And then you can direct me whatever way you want. Right. But now it's just self taped, so you don't even have the opportunity to do that. Right, right. You just have to send them. 
one, one audition. You right. Know? They're very specific. Like, don't send a multiple auditions. You send one, your best one. Oh, and yeah. And you're just like, Cause every damn it, man. Because like, I'll send you the one that yep. I think everyone's going to be, be doing. Mm -hmm. And then I'll send you this one that I think is just more me, the right. way I would do it. Right. Why don't you just send it anyway? I don't know because uh, it always goes through like my my uh, agent and she's right. sometimes is very like doesn't want to disappoint right. the casting yeah. people. Yeah. Well, then you be. should next time send the one you think you should send. That's that's a good idea. Instead of sending what everybody else is sending. No, like, absolutely. Now absolutely. you look like Joe Schmo. I, I try to do that. I, I do try to do that. But like, yeah, it's just one of those things where it's beautiful when you actually can go in the room and read yeah. with with the director yeah. or the casting people in the room rather than just doing this thing and sending them to them you don't even see if they you don't even know if they watch it you yeah, know that's what i'm saying this new way here about people doing it at home and then sending them they don't even have to rent an office they can just be in their house and just look at the tapes you know what i mean i mean the actor is doing everything he's producing so, the whole thing right, yeah so i'm glad that i'm not in this time i mean i'm in this time but you know i've been stopped reading for roles i stopped myself I just felt like, you know what, I'm not going to read for Rose anymore. And I, I just prayed about it. I always prayed to God about it. And I said, I said to myself, I might lose a couple of roles, but if I do, it's okay. But I got you got to stick with it once you make your decision. And I stuck with it. I didn't lose not a role. They, did they threaten me? Yeah, if he doesn't read, he's not going to get it. I didn't cool. read, and I still got it. I bet you your <laughs> friends uh, from uh, Mississippi, is that where you Alabama. From Alabama. I bet Union your friends Town. and family from Alabama were so mm. proud of you. Oh, man. Like, you're sending them. You're, you're, you're in these movies with, like, Jim Carrey, Billy mm -hmm. Bob. Like, you're in big. Ice Cube. Not Chris like these Tucker. tiny movies. Right. Like, you're in these big blockbuster hits. Right, yeah. There's no other little dudes really doing that besides you and fucking Peter Dinklage. Yeah. yeah. No other little. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, my hometown, man. They, I have the key to the city, but I can tell you something. It, I went to the bank, didn't unlock the bank. <laughs> so I unlock the, no, that's, a, di like that's this a different one. key. Yeah, yeah. That's a different. You only yeah. get key to the parks and recreation. Yeah. You don't get key to the <laughs> federal to the, yeah. reserve. Yeah, but I was waiting, man. I thought, you know, I had this big old key. Let's go. Um, Let's move to Friday. How was that? Did you have to audition for Friday? Yeah. Or, oh, you did. Yeah. They didn't, because I've never not I've never seen another little person black actor. Oh, mm -hmm. they're, they're they're around. Are they? Oh yeah, Dana. Dana. Uh, what's that what, guy named? What, what what dwarfism is Dana? Because Dana looks. I think he's uh what what do they call those doors? Because he he's Dana just looks like an average person. Oh, he looks like he, an average person, but right. he's just like my size or your size. Right. Does he look like the one? Long legs, from, long long arms. I know just what you're fucking, about. Yeah. Is that a pituitary dwarf? Is that what they're called? I don't know. I, I, why I am know. I even saying it? Like, is that what they're called? Yeah. Like they're you aliens. Know Felix, Way to go, guy. You know Felix <laughs> Celia? <laughs> huh? Felix is he more like Felix Dana? Would you? I don't know who Felix is. Oh, you don't. He was he was in Buck Rogers. He was the robot, okay. but he was inside that robot. So that ain't really telling you because he was inside it. But uh, but you were you were you were he was also in Star Wars. Yeah, right? you were in Ewok. Yeah, I yeah. Was in Ewok. Yeah, is that how you met Warwick? Yep, that's how I met Warwick. He was a little kid. Dude, you've been doing time. movies for a long time. Yeah. yeah. What was was Star Wars before? I'm gonna get you, sucker. But, oh yeah, Star Wars was like. We shot that like that was like eighty eighty one. And where did yeah. you shoot that at? Uh, Star Wars. We shot that in the redwoods of of uh, Oregon. Oh wow! Yeah. Did you get to keep the costume? No. Oh, come somebody, on, man! Somebody stole one of those costumes though. Oh really? Yeah, of course that would they be did. Worth, that would be worth some money, man. Yeah. I don't know how they were able to get it, man. But they got dude, it. Dude, if you had a costume like that, like you, like the whole fetish thing. With women would be like holy you took it shit. To there, I was thinking like best Halloween costume. Like, yeah. a, 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 yeah. that, that, <laughs> but no, like what, remember we were talking about. You said you dressed up like a teddy bear, like the teddy bear thing. Yeah, you know. But like a woman that's like always fetishized about like being with an Ewok, you show up like that, dude. 
I'm gonna tell you something. Those that suits, is the shit. Yeah, but the shit would be if you get in hot, there, man. Hot, and man. Sweaty. Your underwear be soaking like in five minutes. I don't wear underwear. Man. Oh well, shit, you be running in. Well, then your crabs will be sweating yeah. in five minutes. Wouldn't be able to wear that suit no more. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I took it to. Okay. okay, yeah, we were thinking Halloween costume. No, co- you definitely went some competitions, <laughs> and right. you went fetish. Yeah, you which might went, lead to the fetish. You would thing. win some competitions with it. Well, probably. Punch just left a horror convention. <laughs> where, scary movie, not scary like movie. brothel or yeah. whorehouse. Oh, and, scary movies, and I have this feeling that there are women or men also that go to these conventions Mm -hmm. with fetishes. So this is where Ponch's mind goes Mm -hmm. because he does get the women. Oh, you know me so well. (laughs) That get, that come after him for being a little dude. Mm -hmm. So they're like, where do I find me? One of you? Yeah. And you're like, no, I'm married. I'm like, go to the LPA convention. Yeah. You have them swinging all over your ass. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You'll you'll have them swinging on each leg, each titty. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, that's where I that's where I know Punch went with it. You might have some little people, women that are fucking pissed, (laughs) but like stealing the big women stealing their dudes. Yeah. Yeah, man. (laughs) Yeah, you never went to a convention, huh? Yeah, I went to two. I went to a couple when I was a kid. When I heard about that convention, I couldn't believe what I saw when I was there. I'll just leave it at that. Oh, I told Punch. But he's the one. Remember when I told you that um, uh, someone told me, a friend of mine told me that if I went to a convention like that, I'd be peeling the girls off of me like a banana? (laughs) No. Like, that's who told me. He's like, these things are nuts. I I, I had heard about it, but until I saw it, I was like, no. When I saw it, I was like, wow. Now, when you went to it, Uh were you already married? No. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> hey, no, no, but I wasn't looking. Any either. stories? No, but I wasn't looking. Either. <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't looking either. I was just there to experience, you know, just to see, because I had heard so much about it. It was everything that I heard. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, so I went when I was a little kid, and mm-hmm. then I went one time later in life. I was mm-hmm. like early twenties. Okay, I went on three separate dates just from the one night i had three little women yeah going like and i didn't even that's a lot yeah and i seriously took them out but i i didn't like i was so young and stuff and didn't know Mm -hmm. what i was doing and but yeah no you seriously peel the women off yeah. It's crazy. is it like that for every little dude or just like you well know? you gotta be good looking too yeah man. yeah come I mean, on dude you there's, can't not, be, you can't there's be three good looking dudes right. in here right now but. oh man <laughs> yeah <laughs> You're rethinking if I was it, think, right? if I was if, if you I were married, single if you were single I'd take a shot <laughs> yeah oh you, mm-hmm. I'm telling you punch it's insane it's any insane. little dude out there that's listening to our podcast that's never been to a little people a convention. Go. Yeah. Go. This is you it's a golden ticket. Well, I don't know what it's like now, but when we were going. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh I'm sure yeah. it's the same. Like what could change, you know? Oh well, yeah, social, but that's so many years ago. Things have changed. When the last now. time you've been with me? Oh when is social over twenty thing years ever yeah, change over anything? 20 years. Yeah. With really? little people? Like Going to these conventions, like what social thing is going to change? Like there was no cell then. phones or nothing back when. No, no, no I know, I but you could still no go there, media. and if you're like a little dude, you could still, yeah, you know, smash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I don't <laughs> think they're smashing like we were smashing. <laughs> yeah, what? <Well, I> <laughs> I thought you just went on dates. I didn't know you were smashing. No, not you got to tell me some of this smashing not stuff. Smashing, dude. <laughs> oh, it's coming out now. No, this guy no, just said he no, went on dates. No. He was smashing. What were you doing, dude? Nothing. Just you're, hanging out. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're just, just having a good time. Just having a good time, buddy. <laughs> Eating food, <laughs> dancing, <laughs> dancing. Oh, oh, it's a lot of dancing. Wait. It's a lot of dancing. Yeah. No, I, I hear mean, there's the, the dance. The dance. Yeah. Is the there like a prom a king and prom queen? No. No, no. Oh, no. man. It's just dancing. But they dude. have a talent show. Yeah. Uh, you know. And, and everyone can do the sports, you know, like that you wouldn't be able to. Well, that like came that along you, later like, now like where the sports, with, like basketball. Yeah, there, there was. 
track and field. Oh, I'm so glad you pointed that out because yeah. I wanted to get into the L.A. Breakers. Oh, yeah. This guy was a part of the L.A. Yeah. Breakers. Mm. Do you know what that is? Yeah, the basketball team. Yeah. I know. Mm. I okay. used to go watch them as what? a kid. As you a went kid, and watched I them? Went and watched That's the awesome. L.A. Breakers. Was, mm -hmm. was he on the team? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody was. Well the, well, the first team was called the Hollywood Shortest. And that was Billy what, Barty. That was, right. That's the, and then George Rosita took over. Mm. You know, but that was the team where we would go around. It was similar to the Harlem Globetrotters. You know, we go around, we do things, do, you know, gags and stuff. And then the Breakers was a team of competition where we actually went against other little people because once we heard about they were doing that, it's like, well, who who doesn't, if you're short like we are, we want to compete against people your own size. Especially you know? in basketball. Basketball, yeah. man, you know. And, boy, that's always been So was dream. that a, something that started out of LPA? What, which one? The LA Breakers? We yeah. started that. That was started by myself, Joe Griffo, and Scott Danberg. Shout out to we Joe Griffo. That. And I think Mike Gilder. Because Mike was the one that came back wow. from the convention and told us. He was a competitive fucker. Oh, I oh, met yeah. Mike. Oh, oh yeah. He would be like the dude that's like, they hired that dude? That yeah. guy sucks. Yeah, yeah, that's Mike. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was totally like yeah. that. I'm like, damn, Mike. I'm casting yeah. He's actually kind of good, yeah. Like, he was oh, a, an actor. He, uh, mm -hmm. He's no longer with us. But, yeah. yeah, he was very, very competitive, yeah, man. And I'm like, I'm like, god damn, like, is this how you have to be to, like, kind of make it? Because yeah. he was... He was Somewhat rough. successful. Yeah. Yeah. He was also an Ewok. Yeah. I remember going to his house. Oh, yeah. And uh, him showing me a check that he just got because they remade the the oh. the uh, Star Wars movies, the, the, the Return of the of Jedi. Them. They they did a remake of it with right. like uh, and they amplified the sound and right. like yeah. the, okay. the visual effects of it. And he yeah. had a check. This was like maybe 15 years ago. No, 10 years ago. And he had a check. For twenty five thousand dollars, nice. like like a like a residual check. Yeah. I'm like, what? Like this is you did this like yep. thirty years ago? Holy yeah. shit! Yeah, <laughs> and he's, yeah. that's the beauty hey. of acting, dude. Mailbox oh, yeah. money, bro. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, he got it too, fucker. <laughs> yeah, you, he's like he's not the only one that got it. Yeah, talking about were you an Ewok too? No. Oh. <laughs> No. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> didn't know you were above it. <laughs> I'm not above. I would have. No, I'm joking. You probably didn't know. I guess I wasn't. What? I wasn't going out on cats. I was like eight years old. But even uh, like with the uh, Warwick Davis on there, he was like, he was young, Warwick right? Was a kid. He, Warwick was like, I don't know how old he was, but I remember I mean, he was good. Yeah, he must have been like, like thirteen. Age, like he, he was a do, little boy. Yeah, because you had to function in those suits, man. Because. You know, to put on those suits, man, you had to put, first you had pajamas that go on first. Then after that, you had the bulk, which made you big. So you put that on, and people had to help you put that on. Then after that, now you're putting that fur on, and you got to squeeze that. So by the time you finish, you like this. Boy. Dude, by you know the time you're I mean? finished, you're, you're, you lost yeah. like 10 pounds. Oh, oh yeah. and when you put the head on, man, it was funny. When we had run around in those outfits, you know, to test everything out. Man, when they pulled the heads off, it was like all these little people. It was like steam coming up. You could have put a pot of rice up there and cooked it. You know, <laughs> it was just shoot, shooting up everywhere. Do, do the Ewok voice right now. Oh, I can't do that. I know. Voice. I don't even. Did, did, nah. it, was that just sound effects they just that they added? That, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was sound effects. He wasn't talking like that, dude. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make this fun. <laughs> well, yeah, but see the movie first and yeah. then realize. <laughs> He always, he always scolds me. Uh, <laughs> but I, I sit there and take it because... You know, I'm your elder. Yeah, he's, he's my elder. That's right. That's yeah, right. you're three years older than me. I'm your elder. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You're elder. He's no, like, but I wanted to... We did. We cut it off. I want to get back to Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Friday, so Friday. So you Friday. had to audition. Mm -hmm. And you did. Mm -hmm. Did you audition for Ice Cube and Chris Tucker? No, it was for the no, because Chris. No. You gotta remember, Chris was young then. Yeah, Chris, I think had done like one movie before that. So, okay. No, Chris was trying out for the role like uh, everybody else. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I went in. I didn't know what it was for. You know. Oh, I you did no it. I did. No, I didn't know what it was. That's for. what Hollywood does to you. Hollywood, you'll go on an audition, and they'll. It's like a. Uh, 
It's like a certain. They won't tell you the name of the movie. They'll call it something else. And yeah, no, that's and, what, yeah. and then they say, "Well, it's it's kind of like this B movie. You're gonna try and be part of. It. Next thing you know, you're on a hit movie called yeah. Friday. Yeah, they'll they'll, they'll 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 yeah. they'll change the title of it, and then mm-hmm. they'll 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 say untitled director. So you have yeah. no idea. Yeah, you just have these lines, and you're like, I have no idea what the tone yep. of this is. Right, I have no idea who's directing. Like you know what they've done before. Yeah, like, right, kinda, right. I but I went in. It was Gary Gray. And I think he had directed Ice Cube in a video because he directed videos. Music uh, videos. So, music videos. Yeah. So I think Ice Cube got him to direct, you know, the film. And, yeah, I went in. It was myself and Dana and Carlton. You know Carlton? You know Carlton? Oh, Carlton. Yeah. From Carlton the, the dance suit. Like no, Carl- not that Carlton. Oh, okay. It's a little guy named Carlton. Oh, no, I don't know a little guy Carlton. I don't know Carlton. And it was, I don't know, but I know we all tried out. And then I remember the director was laughing after I did what I did. And so I walked out. Next thing I know, they were auditioning women. They said, that's going to be the wife. You know, so I remember. Miss Parker? Oh, yeah, it was going to be. And I remember uh, the lady that got it, you know, she was from, uh, what's that show, Bob Barker? Uh, the Price show? is Right. The Price is Right. She was one of the models in there. And then also, uh, what's this girl name? She was in um, uh, the, the show with Sherman Hemsley. Uh, she played his son's his son's uh, wife in the show, but she tried out. And then Thelma from Good Times, you know, uh, JJ. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. She tried out, so we didn't know. And so after I got it, and which was good, they put me with the tallest one because the one from from um, The Price Is Right, she was the tallest one, and all uh, of them was pretty, you know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So I wasn't gonna lose no kind of way, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know. And it was great, man. That's awesome. Yeah. And did you guys, you guys shot right here in L.A., right off of? Yeah. We shot on 126 in Normandy. No way. Yeah, was that where the whole movie was shot, out there? Yeah. Yeah, that's where most of it was shot. I mean, yeah, that's where we shot. That's where I shot for, like, two weeks or three. Yeah. Yeah, it was right out there. They, I guess they had paid the people, you know, who had the houses there because, you know, we were up there all night. They gave them a handsome little paycheck. paycheck. Yeah, yeah, they got something, you know. So, yeah, but it was good, man. That was one of the most fun movies I've I, ever done. You know what's funny is I, I was listening to, to a podcast and um, Ice Cube was on it and he was talking about that. And he said that when he thought of that movie, when he wrote that movie, he was like thinking, he's like, all the movies that get made about like the hood just show like the bad parts of it. And mm-hmm. like, and, and just like the worst, us killing each other and all that. And, 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 and he said that like, he, he's like, but that's not what we are. Like, we joke around with each other. We oh, fuck around yeah. with each other. Oh, we man. laugh. Like, oh, yeah. like we're just like everybody else. Yeah. Like, it, it, yeah. it might be even funnier. Right. Yeah. And so that's why he wrote that movie. And, and he wanted to show that side of it. And fuck, yeah. boy, did he do well, man. Nailed oh, it. Man. Nailed it. Nailed, nailed it. it. Nailed, nailed it. Tony is being in it. Yeah. You were good. Yeah, that movie, boy, really helped. You never know what movie's going to make it. You know, and, and it was something that you brought up about... You never know sometimes what you're auditioning for. And when I auditioned for the Michael Jackson Captain EO, nobody knew they were, were that they were auditioning for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. To be in a film with Michael Jackson. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, man. And then to find out in the day you come to the set and Mike walks in, man, it was just quiet. You couldn't hear a pin fall. He walked in with his shades on. He sat down. And I was like, wow, that's Michael Jackson. Which is everybody was probably sitting at that table was saying, because yep. I mean everybody was looking, you know, and you had the, one of the biggest directors to direct it, Francis Ford Coppola, who directed The Godfather. It's one of my favorite movies, man. Yeah, I mean, The Godfather, boy, what a classic. That's you know? who directed. That's who directed. Then George Lucas was to produce on it, and then they got the best <clears throat> camera guy from I think he came from Paris or France or whatever, because uh, they were using the three D camera at that time and that camera kept breaking down i remember man you know and it was costing like a million dollars a minute to make at that particular time damn a million a minute yeah damn that's a lot of money a million a minute now people are like making like like independent films for like a hundred grand you know yeah million dollars a minute no but the three camera back then yeah yeah i remember that camera was it was breaking down a lot. I remember when we shot with red camera okay. for our 3D moving stuff. 
They said it was about, so this is later in time, it was about a hundred grand a minute. hundred wow. grand a minute to shoot with that thing. Wow. Like anything. Yeah. It's like, damn. Yeah. I guess they're making them better now. Yeah. Maybe they wasn't, course. didn't know too much at that time, but I yeah. remember that thing broke down a lot, man. When, when you were um, shooting these movies, Tony, these insanely big blockbuster hits, and you were doing scenes with like Billy Bob, Bernie Mac, Jim Carrey, uh-huh. Like Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. I mean, uh-huh. were you starstruck at all? Were you, or were, were you, or, or did, were you just like, let's work, let's do this? I was, let's do it. The only thing about I was starstruck, I'm not gonna lie, it was Michael. Yeah. yeah. You know, when Michael walked in, man, it's just something about that guy. Well, presence. that guy was the biggest star yeah, like ever. He was for, huge. Yeah. You know, and him huge. and I became friends, man. You know, he would always love to come over where I was at. And, like, the character I was playing was kind of funny. So he would always come over, and then he'd get me in trouble because he'd start laughing. And Francis would say, Michael, what are you doing? You're supposed to be serious. He'd just tell him, stop. Uh-huh. But I wasn't doing that. I said, look, I'm playing my character. <laughs> wow. You know, and he would play like jokes, man. Like, he brought me something. He said he had some rattlesnake eggs. He wanted me to look at it. It was in this package, man. And I said, man, I ain't opening that up. He said, come on, just open it up. And so I reached over to open it up, and it had something in there, man, like a rubber band and something. But it sounded just like a rattlesnake. Man, I threw that thing one way. I was gone. He all on the floor. He laughing, man. So he liked to do stuff like that. Little pranks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like he told me one time, he said, I want your autograph. Get out of here. You, Michael Jackson, want my autograph. And he said, yeah. So he gives me the pen. I said, okay, Mike. So I started to write, and there's a cap in there. Go pow! And so I throw the thing up and start running. He on the floor <laughs> laughing, boy. So he got me a couple of times. That's awesome. That's a, that's rad. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, because uh, this was during the time that you were here. Did you ever audition for the movie Tiptoes? No. 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 Mm-mm. Were you in the movie? Mm-mm. No. Tip-toe. What did you hear about it? No. Gary Oldman plays a little person. He's on his knees the whole no. time in the movie. It's no. like a really, like, weird how, movie. How was it? Huh? Punch auditioned. No, I didn't know. I, no, <laughs> it, it, we we talked about it with Brad when when Brad was on the show because a lot of pe- little people were in it. And I wanted to see if you auditioned for it, and I don't remember seeing you in it. So no, yeah. I didn't even know about it. Yeah, it was kind of a fucked up movie, man. Yeah. Were were there other little people in it? Yeah. Like and then also like a, that dude Gary you're whatever. You're supposed to watch it, dude. I know. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's I got movie. busy. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I was gonna watch it, but then I just lived my life. Right. <laughs> yeah, and so he played the role of a little person. Yeah, an see, average. That, see, that's messed up. Yeah, because to me, it's a spit in the face of little people because it's saying, "Well, you can't act good enough, so we want to use this name or whatever." And to me, that's messed up. That is messed up. No, it, it definitely is. I, I feel like it's almost like, I mean, it's definitely as bad as like what we've been talking about of mm-hmm. AI using little people parts mm-hmm. to put on stars instead of just using a little person for right. it. It's such a kick to the nuts. It is. Yeah. Yeah. AI is about to get even gnarlier. I saw this morning. They were like, now there's going to be like Sylvester Stallone, uh, Tom Cruise, <laughs> Elon Musk. Mm. Like their images, but somebody else is gonna portray what they're talking and what they're telling people. That's so, up. and I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah. In order to do that, do they have to pay these dudes off? I don't think so because no. they already have their images. Right. Once you enter places and stuff, and they're like, well, "If you're gonna be here, just know we we're can filming use your image you. For anything. We're using your image." Jeez, that's why AI is gnarly, dude. No, I mean that's it's it's up. um. It's really gnarly, man. Um, what did I want to ask? I had another question I wanted to. One of my favorite scenes of all time, mm-hmm. comedic wise, just is is in Bad Santa. Um, mm-hmm. The scene where you're all in the boxing ring. Oh, oh yeah. Was that all improvised? Because you guys were with a little kid too. Like you guys kind of like blocked it off and then improvised the whole thing, or was that like word for word? Because that it, shit was, it was a, funny, it, bro. It was a script, but it wasn't word for word. Yeah. You know, I did my thing in it. You know, that was some improvising in that. <laughs> yeah, but that, but that kid, man, he he was good, and also Billy. But yeah, that was something that was rewritten like a year later, almost. Okay, because it wasn't in the original script, and then when they added it, I'm like, wow, I liked it. 
yeah, you know? it was so yeah. good. It was yeah, so, yeah, so it was, good. Yeah, I liked that, man. That was a nice part. It was a nice part. Yeah. What part was that in the boxing ring? Where he's teaching, where, where Billy Bob gets him to teach uh, the, the little kid to fight bullies off. So he brings him in the ring. Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. Marcus, come on. And you're like, right, I told right. you I didn't want to do this. Right, right. right. <laughs> yeah. And you're just talking shit to the little right. kid because he's like, eh. Yeah. Right, yeah. And yeah, I said, look right. at come him. Come on, be mad. Yeah. Be mad. Be Get mad. Be mean. Get mean. Yeah, that ah, was a That was scene. such a great scene. Yeah, man. I, like I remember that. just rewinding that scene, like when it was even on VHS, like right. rewinding it, watching it over and over again because I couldn't stop laughing. And I know the director was coming over. He came over and he said, man, do that fall again. And when I looked at it, you know, I'm like, what fall? That's just the way I'm falling. Yeah, it's you like. Know, you know, I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> yeah, like, it just, I fell and it just kind of fell into that spot. You're like, that's you know? just like the way little people fall. Right. I, I didn't, you know, it was like, well, do that again, man. That's funny. But I didn't know what I was doing. I know what you're doing. You falling. were holding your nuts and you fell, but you were continue like you fell holding your nuts. And right. then you like teeter tottered. I did. Yeah. That's yeah. it. And that's but you never left. You, you never. You always kept right. your hands on your balls. Yep. Yep. That shit right. was funny, man. Yeah. Yeah, that was good scene. Good scene. Well, we're at the top of our show. Here we are. Yeah. We got four minutes left. I'm. What? Do you want to? Are you trying to end it? No. 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 I'm joking. Um. Yeah, we are at the top of the show. That's, this is fucking yeah, been so fun. Yeah. But I want to ask Tony: Is there anything now that you still want to accomplish? Mm. Uh, you know, I, 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 I kind of want to do. Uh, it's a movie that was written by me and a couple of friends, um, and I, I want to do that movie. He passed away. Okay. Um, and his name was Gino Denti, and um, I got another friend that helped wrote it, you know, and his name was Tony Vitale, and that movie, I would really like to see it get done, you know, What's I mean, it's done, but we have to, you know, I, I just want to, I just want to play the role, it's a, it's a good role, you know, and it's like a mafia role, and the little person would be the lead. You know, a lead mafia little person role. Yeah, but it's not with the cursing and all like that. Yeah, it's it's, it's more like it's a comedy. It's a good friend comedy movie. You know, buddy it's, comedy, buddy buddy comedy, but it's, dedicated it's, to your but friend, it, right? But it's real too. You know, it's just I I can't explain it. It's just real. You and your you friend know. wrote it, and uh, a couple of other guys, and Tony Vitale, and a couple of other guys. You know, well, um, well, but, but let's yeah. make it happen, man. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, that's something yeah. we should make happen. It you did a part in there for me, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jara uh, looking for <laughs> real actors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always networking, dude. And I, and I also would like to do a reality show, though. I don't know why. I just want to do one. You know, I think that'd be pretty cool. Like a reality show <laughs> based on your life. Based on my life. Uh, a one where Tony Cox goes to different places because wherever I go, man, it's crazy. Oh, you know, yeah. Like I just left Georgia. Whenever I go overseas, I'm amazed at how people know me. It's like, why well, do they know me like this? You know what I mean? You're a movie people, star. A lot of, well, a lot of people say that, look, man, you've been around a long time, and I guess I have, but it amazed me when I can go to another country and they be saying, Tony Cox. Yeah. That son. Yeah. You know. You know what's funny is whenever I hang out with like when I used to hang out with you a lot and whenever I hang out with <clears> same <throat> thing. Right. Like, like I'm always watching you guys like people walk in like mm -hmm. interrupting while we're eating just to get a pick and just to tell you how awesome yeah. you are and like, you know, and you got the way you guys deal with that is really professional and like it's an eye opener yeah i noticed yeah. that by we man when when we worked on that movie miami in my in florida we never um, even got into that i know that's I know. funny but we'll but, get into but, it next yeah. time but I, we're I having just, you back on but okay yeah, yeah. but I, I just remember working with him i mean and we were at the airport and man he's got a fan base you know He's got a fan. People's coming up to both, but I was like his fan base, man. I yeah, was like, it's wow. like it's it's on another <laughs> yeah. level. Uh, I just came up with a reality show, and this is where how we're gonna end this podcast. Okay, mm -hmm. we're gonna get Tony on a reality show. It's gonna be called 
Love on the cocks. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that is really good. Yeah. Right? That's seventh grade yeah. education, wow. man. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. Love on the cocks. Yeah. Love on the cocks. Yeah. That's pretty good. I like it, man. Yeah. That's, good. That's got a catch. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's got a good saying. ring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, Tony, we want to thank you for coming out. Oh, my goodness. And spending the day with Poncho and I. We definitely need you back on here again. Okay. Because we've worked on stuff and we need to right. talk about because we had some fun. Poncho, you and Poncho worked on yeah. stuff. We need to get we'll in depth more of that, too. So. Okay. But uh, I want to thank Dev Noodle for having us out. Always love doing our show here. This isn't our studio. Yeah. So you may see other podcasts using the same studio that we use. They just love it because we're in it. But <laughs> then, yes, Dev Noodle, thank you for letting us use it. Thank this. you, Dev Noodle. Thank I you. also want to thank Nima and I, I am a, it's a daily supplement. It's all natural. Keeps me going. That's why I got to sit here with these two dudes mm -hmm. and let all my energy go. And if you want some, go to Nima.com, put in the hashtag little rev, and you'll get 15% off. There we go. Boom. That's the first sponsor. That's our first sponsor. We're still shooting for Tootsie Roll Mitchies. Come on. <laughs>